Hi guys, this is Mike Hibbard back with another Python Django tutorial for you. Um, unfortunately, I had a few audio problems with the last uh, recording of this, so this is the re-recorded version. So this time we're going to deal with the subject of AJAX and how to perform AJAX requests using the Django framework. Now, the example I'm going to show you is on our articles page. I'm going to put a search box here and underneath I'm going to create um, an area where we're going to show Django, uh, sorry, Ajax results from that search and we're going to use the framework to do um, a quick search inside the database to find anything that's similar to what we're typing in in the search box on the page. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up Django so that it knows how to receive the messages. So the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to set up a URL. Just one more URL inside of our uh, article model uh, app page. So we're just basically going to add in one which says search on the end and we're going to pass it through to our article views page uh, .py file and to the function in there called search underscore titles and that should be enough for us to be able to receive a message from our Ajax calls using JavaScript and then we can then process the information now let's go to our views page and under there right at the bottom of the page <clears throat> we're going to put our function now the first line is obviously just to establish that this is a view method using our request object. The second few lines is just to say, is this a post method? So similar to what we did with, with our forms in previous tutorials, we're going to check to see if this has been posted to from somewhere. And if it is, then we're going to presume that there's a search underscore text variable inside of the post dictionary and pass it back into a variable. If there's not, then we're just going to set that variable to nothing. The next bit is where it starts to get interesting because previously we used uh, things like um, article objects get by ID and then passed it a variable. This time we're going to use something slightly different because we want the search text to be uh, something like what's in the database, but not exactly so that we can have a bit more of a flexible search. So to do that, we start and use the filter command that is also associated with our article models. Now th this filter command is on every model that you create using the Django models framework. And the way that it works is that it will take arguments as parts of the filter. And as we know, we've got a, an, a title member variable associated with our article object. If you look at the rest of this, you have two underscores and then the word contains. So by tacking on this extra part of uh, the variable name, we can actually send in a message to the model to say we want to filter by filter this title uh, variable by this method. So we're saying filter title where it contains the search text we're passing in. And that should then go away and do something similar to what you would do in, in SQL where you would use the like command. And then it would come back and show any matches that matched your like uh, SQL parameters. So that's how we do that. There are other ways of doing it. Um, and if you want to know more about what else you could tackle on the end of there, then it's worth doing a, a quick Google. You'll be able to find out. Um, just basically search for the filter function, Django filter or model filter function, and that should give you a good idea of some of the other things that are available and there's some pretty handy stuff in there so I would advise you to go and have a, a closer look at that. Now the final thing we do is we do what we do in most view files 
we just render the response into a template file which I've prepared for you here. Now this is uh, not your bog standard template file. It doesn't, uh, for instance, uh, inherit from base HTML like the other templates that were prepared. And if I just flip over to there, I'll show you that. So it basically has an if statement and it tests to see if we have any articles, first of all. If we don't have any articles, it basically returns an li tag with some text in the side inside to say there are no, no no articles or none to show if there are articles then it does a for loop and generates a load of li tags with html links or hyperlinks inside and the hyperlinks are simply passing through to the article page so uh, we're passing the id through so we can look at the full article for those search results and of course we're just dropping in the title there so we can recognize it in the list and closing things off so ideally what we should get here is a load of li tags with html links inside but no no html or body or head tags inside of there just plain li tags and nothing more than that and that's kind of the, the idea behind ajax is to just basically pass on what you need and insert it into the existing already loaded page. So that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna render a small part of the page and then let Ajax do the rest. Okay, now, in order to put the search box on our page, so we want to, to have the search box about here, we're gonna edit the template for the articles page. Now, We've already got our links, so article, create article, which is on the top of the page here, just there. We're gonna add in a search box just below there, so this is where it is. I'm gonna put a, a heading tag in there just to give it some, some uh, context on the page. And then we're gonna render in this CSRF token, because technically, even though this is an Ajax call, it's it, to the system, it looks exactly the same as if we're posting a form back to the Django framework. So we need to pass in the CSRF token so that Django can check whether this is a valid form. Now, at that point, I'm just gonna stop and I'm gonna move over to the views page because unfortunately, our articles view doesn't yet pass in a valid token to this template so we need to stop just there and go over to the views to make sure it does now our old view for the list of all the articles is just right at the top of here by the way you can down, now download the uh, the source code to this tutorial from my website if you just go right at the bottom of the web page um, at mikehibbert.me.uk you'll see there's a link there and it has all the code in here so you'll be able to download that and test it out on your own system so this is the the code from all the the previous tutorials that we had where we slightly changed everything here just to include our csrf um, token and then the three other things that we used to pass in are articles language and session underscore language variables i've just basically dropped into the rest of this Args dictionary and then I've cleaned up this line just here just to pass in the args whereas previously they were embedded into this area of the function so if you look at the previous tutorials you'll see that's slightly different because I've, I've pushed everything above the render to response function just for uh, ease of reading and also it looks a lot tidier as well so that's how we've passed in our CSRF token now that we're done that we can be happy that when this comes through it will be in the page and our JavaScript will be able to access it and be able to bundle it up with our search request so we need a few more lines underneath this in the articles text in the articles template one input for our search with the ID of search which we use that to basically grab a hold of it with using our uh, 
our text, uh, sorry, JavaScript. And then we need an area underneath to actually display the results. So if the if the query is successful, we want somewhere to to push in all those li tags that we're generating in our Ajax search. So I'm just going to put a ul tag in there with an ID of search hyphen results, which again we'll grab that using it using um, JavaScript, and then more importantly we're going to use jQuery in this context. And we're going to get the ID of that and then push whatever li tags that are returned into the contents of this ul list. So we're just going to leave that empty to start with, but it'll get populated later by the Ajax. Okay. Now, the, the one thing that we haven't done yet is we haven't included our um, JavaScript. So to do that, I've downloaded um, on the system, if I can just find it, uh, Python. into our assets folder. I've created a new JS folder inside of there for the JavaScript. And then I've added um, jQuery, the current version of jQuery because that's what I'm going to use to actually do a lot of the work. Um, and then our ajax.js file, which is the, the, J, the, the JavaScript that's actually going to do the, the, the whole grabbing the information, parceling it up, and then sending the request back to the framework, the, J, the Django framework. So to make sure that they're included, um, if you haven't seen our the static files tutorial then I advise you to go back and look at the, that, that, that one before you try to attempt this because this one is very much based on what we did there. In our last tutorial all we did was include a CSS file but now we're going to start and drop in JavaScript. So to do that we do as we do in normal HTML we include script tag and this one points to, to assets, JS, jQuery, and secondly, we import our Ajax file also. And obviously we do that after we've imported jQuery because this depends on that code there. And that's enough to simply include the, the JavaScript. What we do, have, however, need to do is we need to now use one of the commands that we used previously when we were doing the static files which is right here collect static so this basically gets whatever's in the the static folder that we've set up in our settings and then makes it available so that the web server can serve it as a static file through the URL system so collect static if we just run that probably won't say anything to mine because I've already imported them nope didn't do it for me but you should get a list of files underneath here saying uh, that they've been pulled in and you should see the newly created or the newly downloaded Java, uh, jQuery file and also your Ajax file Right, so that's now included. Now that we've done that, let's just take a look at what ajax.js does to actually formulate the, the query and send it across. So here we are, and the first thing that strikes you is what on earth is this bit here? If you don't know jQuery, then I'll briefly explain. Um, when you load in Java, uh, you want to be able to make sure that it's actually run once your whole HTML page has been loaded because some things may not have loaded in yet and you may be trying to execute um, commands on something that doesn't technically exist yet inside your page, inside your browser. So to, to, do, to make sure that that doesn't happen, we have this little thing here, which basically means 
when the document has loaded, do the following code. And obviously we close up the braces on the bottom there just to say this is where all the code ends for that particular intention. So when the document loads, do all of this code here. Now the next thing we do is we establish an event, an event handler um, saying that when we detect that the keyboard has been used and someone is allowing or has pressed a button and the key is now up, so the key has been down but is now up, do the following code inside of here. Now this part here is basically saying watch the search box on HTML on the on the articles page so watch this search box input and if you do get an event that means key up do that code in the middle and this is just basically our Ajax call we're gonna say post the information back to the URL or our restful handler if you want to call it that and the URL for that is article search, which we've set up in our URLs.py file. The data is what we're going to send back inside of our posted form. And the first piece of data is our search underscore text. And it's coming from the search box. So we're just getting the value out of the search box. The next bit is the CF, CS, RF middleware token, which is basically what um, is what what ends up on the page as a hidden um, input form field, and the value of it is going to be inside of there. So this is our little jQuery filter to say uh, get the input off the page which name is CSRF middleware token and then get us the value inside of there pass that back inside of this data object and then just to jump to the end we have data type and we're expecting HTML to come back this bit here success basically means if the request works then we need to run a function to do something in response to that and what we're doing is we're running the search success function which we've defi defined lower down afterwards and this basically takes uh, three parameters according to jQuery, uh, jQuery's website and the first one being the data we're not really interested in the, the other two but if you want to go and google it you'll probably find out what they are the data is the thing we're interested in because that's the thing that's going to get sent back to us from the from the, the the restful handler and it's going to be those li tags that we've rendered in the ajax search template and all we're going to do is we're going to look for the a the search results uh, part of the page on our articles page which we defined lower down which is this ul we're going to look for that and we're going to set its internal html so the bit between the ul tags to whatever the data represents and every time we do this search and we do the whole Ajax call it will come back and call that function again and then replace the contents of that HTML with the data and then we should eventually have a, a nice working list of HTML links that start to appear whenever we do a search Okay, right, so if I just restart the server, just a quick refresh, there we go. Now, at this point, I just want to quickly look inside of the inspector. We're just going to check that it's definitely including the scripts in the top there. We check on network and do a quick refresh we should see that it's actually including scripts successfully here which is good 
if I just leave that there, let's just quickly type in um, one letter, comes back with a list of these, and we can see there that the actual call on the network has gone along, its method's been post, and its status is OK. So what did it return? Well, if we click on here, we can actually see what it returned. There we go, just a load of LIs with hyperlinks inside. So that's definitely worked and it's updated our page. If I was to then type that again, we should then get Mike for M. Um, you can even do parts of words, so ICL. It'll even recognize this last part of the word. Okay, so that's the end of this tutorial. Um, I hope that was informative for you. Um, I hope the audio is going to be fine on this video and I'll check it before I upload it again. Uh, if you want to know more about these uh, these tutorials then please click the like button and click the subscribe button also and we'll update you as soon as there's a new one published. Um, I do plan to do more and as I said I've also published the code and will continue to publish the code on my website mikehibbert.me.uk if you always go to the bottom of the page there should be a link so you can click and get a copy from my Dropbox. Okay, thanks for watching.